Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I went and I had my DNA done and I learned some pretty crazy things that I, I honestly had no clue. So uh, if you're interested in me talking a little bit about that, let me know. I don't want to just battle on assuming that it's something you guys are interested in when you're not. So let me know and I'll, I'll maybe talk a little bit about it on the next uh, video. Anyhow, I suspect that the groundhog has maybe met his demise. Uh, do you remember I mentioned in yesterday's video that there was a little bit of a gut pile beside the opening. Well then last night I went out there of course checking and the gut pile was gone. Then I started thinking today it's been about three days since I've seen the groundhog. I think I saw the groundhog the day before the skunk appeared on my deck and ate all the peanuts. So I could have my days mixed up a little bit, but literally went from watching this comical groundhog every single day and evening to really not seeing him for at least three days now. Pretty sure it's been about three days. So I feel kind of bad about that, but yeah, it's life, I guess. Those damn skunks. I didn't realize that skunks could be vicious, but I've been hearing a lot of uh, really negative stuff about them that, uh, wow, interesting. Anyways, I've got a good story. Like I say, every single time I go to read a story, <laughs> they're all good in my opinion. Okay, so let's get to her. Hello, Cryptids Canada. So my story or encounter goes back about 30 years ago. My sister, Frida, and her boyfriend, Dave, basically ran away from home because they were young and in love. But my parents were totally against Frida being with Dave. I was the older sister and had moved into my own apartment while going to college and working full time. Frida contacted me after quite some time and told me where her and Dave were living and that they would like me to come for a weekend. She trusted me not to tell, and that put me in a very tough position because my parents were just distraught. But I felt it was best to keep that secret in order to have contact with my sister. So at least our parents knew that she was okay. So I drove about six and a half hours north to a small cabin near Williams Lake. Dave was working and Frida was keeping the cabin like a small home. They had chickens and they had just bought two goats with the plan to breed goats and sell the kids for additional income. I really was quite impressed with all they had done in such a short time. Now their cabin was down a long trail and it was in the deep woods. It had been a hunting cabin, but the owner of the property liked the idea of a monthly income, so he promised to help build a driveway. But until that time, they had to almost walk a kilometer down this small trail that could be quite treacherous in spots. When I arrived at the area where they parked their cars, Luckily, Dave met me with a dirt bike, which was quite the relief because walking a kilometer with all the bags and things that I brought for their new home didn't impress me at all. So I'm getting off track here, but I really want you to understand just how remote they were. The first night that I was there, we were sitting on the porch watching the sun go down when I started hearing odd noises coming from the thick woods on both sides of the cabin. Frida jumped up and said, let's go inside, the mosquitoes are bad. 
So I shrugged and said okay. Once inside, we were playing Yahtzee, I think, and that's when we started to hear loud bangs on the side of the cabin wall. And I was shocked and somewhat nervous. I looked at Frida and Dave, and I could tell they were trying to hide something. At bedtime, it didn't take me long to fall asleep, but I was soon woken up to the sound of Frida yelling at Dave that there was something looking in the window at her. So I jumped up and I was on my way to their room when they ran into the hall. What's looking in the window, I asked. Frida was breathing heavy and so was Dave, actually. So I said, okay, I want to know what's going on right now. What are you two hiding? And that's when they said that there are Sasquatch beings that come around the cabin sometimes at night and the landlord gave them a shotgun if things were to get out of hand. What do you mean, get out of hand? I was stunned. Of course, I had heard of Sasquatch. We were born and raised in B.C., but most people don't really believe that they're real and live near people. If you believe in Sasquatch, then you believe that they live way up north, very far away from humans. And, usually most people believe that Sasquatch is one being, not a group of them. I told them that they had to tell me everything. So Frida and Dave said, the first night that they were there, something was throwing rocks at them and then at the cabin. So the next day, when the owner came to the cabin to bring them some furniture, they told him about the rocks and The owner said that they are Sasquatch and they've been around for a long time and they generally leave people alone. But they were probably just trying to scare Dave and Frida off. So the owner left and came back an hour later with a shotgun and ammunition for emergencies. He told Frida and Dave that Sasquatch are afraid of guns and usually all they have to do is walk outside with a gun. But after that experience, everything seemed to settle down. They sometimes heard them in the woods at night, but during the day it was always quiet. Dave added that maybe because I was there, they were acting up. So after a while, we all went back to bed. Then the next day, there were footprints under all the windows. I was afraid, but I really didn't want to go home. I had work to do, and that was to convince the kids to come back to Vancouver. Both of my parents were more than willing to give Dave a chance if they came back. So that night, I was barely able to sleep. I only drifted off out of exhaustion, and then I would jolt myself awake. I don't recall if there was a full moon, but it was extremely light out. I had nailed a towel to the windows because I didn't want the Sasquatch seeing in. But something in my mind switched, and all of a sudden I wanted to see what they looked like. So I got up and I lifted the bottom of the towel up and over the one side so I could see if one was trying to see in. So I sat up and I put my back to the wall and I waited. I must have drifted off to sleep when I saw my well-lit room darken a shade or two. I peeked open my eyes and the whole side of the window that the towel was open on was now darker. There was definitely something there. I could see the shape of a head and one shoulder, but I could not make out any details of the face. I was far calmer than I could ever imagine. So, in a nutshell, I was not successful in convincing them to come back. They ended up making peace with my parents, and they stayed in that cabin for six years while they saved their money. They bought a small homestead between Williams Lake and Hundred Mile House. They made peace with the Sasquatch family as well, and they would come around and watch them sometimes. Frida made little dolls for the little girl she saw once from quite a far distance away, and 
Dave would bring home little toys that he would make on his break at the woodworking shop he worked at. The toys would be left in a basket near the woods or from the porch, and sometimes there would be really beautiful rocks left behind. Frida says she still has those rocks. So anyways, I'll say without a doubt that Bigfoot or Sasquatch are real and they aren't always violent. Just because we perceive their actions to be violent in nature, it doesn't make it so. I'm on the side that believes there's an awakening about to happen. They are wanting some sort of relationship like there used to be a hundred years ago. It's just a feeling I have, and only time will tell. Thank you for hearing my story, Jenny Lynn. Well, you know, we appreciate you taking the time to write your story. Uh, It really does mean a lot to us. And I find it very interesting that you use the same terminology that I've heard other people use, which is that there is an awakening that's coming. Um, I find that very, very interesting. And I think it's something that we need to pay attention to. Anyways, guys, you know I love you. I hope you had a great evening and hopefully we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye for now.